Hey everybody, what's up? This is Chris from T3 Handicapping, uh, and I'm here to go over the Monday, October 25th card from Indiana Grand. Um, as always, you can follow us on Twitter at HandicappingT3. You can also uh, follow us on Facebook now. We do have a page, T3 Handicapping, um, right there on Facebook. So if you just type that in the search bar, you should find us pretty quickly. As always, you can purchase our picks, our race summaries, those types of things on our website, t3handicapping.weebly.com. Um, today, we're going to go over the card for Monday the 25th, but we're going to go over it a little bit differently. Um, I'm going to just go over the 20 cent straight fire six, uh, use the ticket constructor to sort of show you how I would put that together. Um, so the only races you'll really miss from the thoroughbred portion of the card are race one and two. Um, but certainly if you purchase the products, you can uh, find those quite easily. So let's go ahead and let's jump straight into things here with our... Um, with our straight fire six uh, sequence, which begins in race three. So I'm going to drive this guy over here uh, and we'll make it a little bit bigger for you as well. So uh, we're starting off here in race number three. This is slated to begin on the dirt. It's a class level 13. Um, so pretty average for an Indiana Grand going six furlongs on the dirt. And it is projected to be a slow pace, which is somewhat unusual uh, for this uh, type of race, but um, we'll go forward here. Now, one thing that you will notice is that there is a big enough gap here for Tomato Bill to be our top selection, and I definitely agree with that. So uh, as we can see, Tomato Bill uh, rates highest on race flow form. Pace is uh, up there in rating as well. Pretty solid record at the distance too. Um, so I'm definitely going to need the two on my A line. But I do think as as a B, I want Jova in there as well. Um, if you watched my Keeneland All Turf Pick Three, you know that I skipped the B line. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this case. Uh, I'm going to use it because we're using a 20 cent wager, and there's a lot more to go. So I'm going to do this. Uh, I'll go A is the two horse and B is the six horse. The five is somewhat scary to me. Good one. Uh, could pull an upset. I'll probably use on some underneath tickets, um, but I'm not going to need as like my main, uh, as like my main player here. So uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and update my ticket creator to reflect my opinion. I like the two the best. You can see I've already done pick six, 20 cents. We're going to use $100 um, or up to $100 on this one. So I've got A and B there. Uh, and now we're going to move on to leg number two. I don't really need to use uh, anybody else here as I'm going through. I think between those two, um, I, should, I should be able to get the job done. Uh, I do like to always go short, by the way, in these big wagers as well, just because if I do get knocked out, I can always swing back with a pick five pretty easily, um, but it's a good way to keep your ticket cost down. So coming in here, uh, to me, there are, are two horses in particular that jump off the page. It's probably pretty easy to figure out which two those are, um, as it is the one and the seven. But the interesting thing here, now I know Tappet's Spirit they like uh, and certainly has numbers that are competitive here. You can see is good at the distance. Um, this is a class level seven, so pretty good horses. Going six furlongs on the dirt um, should be somewhat close in the pace, but I actually like Powell better. Um, if I'm going to go to an A selection. So as I'm going through this, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my A horses. I'm going to use the picks just as they are. So I'll go with one seven. And then on the B line, I'm actually going to upgrade the five. Now, typically, I don't like to use um, favorites on the C line that tends to be where I like to like take a little stab against but in this case if we're talking about the pick six uh, I need to make sure that I'm staying alive and so if I can afford it in my budget I will if I can't this will be the first one that I toss um, but if I can include this horse who theoretically I mean on numbers fits in a lot of ways um, I want to make sure I have that one on side but I probably, when I get to the actual ticket construction, will take this as an opportunity to leave it. So one seven is A's. Uh, let me pull this up here. So I've got one and seven I'm going with as A's. I'm going to use the five as a B, and I'll use the three 
as a C. Uh, I don't feel great about the three, but I also feel like it could potentially beat me if I'm right on everything else. I don't want that to be the reason I didn't cash. Class level seven. So we've got another really good race uh, going a route of ground on the dirt. It's going to be a fast pace. Um, and as I'm looking at this one, this one's a little bit more wide open. I can see um, that the seven ranks well in a lot of categories. Uh, you can see that all of my selections kind of come out to be A's or B's with the exception of the five. And the five actually has some uh, redeeming qualities. So that makes this a really, really challenging race um, to, uh, to select. What I tend to do in this situation when I have something like this is I tend to go through and I tend to look at, okay, who tops each category? So I've got the three and the seven. Okay. And you can see these in the grid three, seven, seven, one, one, three, six, three, six, one, six. So if I go one, six, three, and seven, I feel like I should have most of it covered. Now, the one thing I'm a little concerned about is that I don't have just the straight speed horse, but it does look like Heirloom Kitten should uh, be able to press if we need that. So should Dean Martini. Um, so I've got coverage there. So I think I'm just going to go with a straight A line in this one, and I'm just going to cover my bases. So I'm just going to go one, three, six, seven. The four is interesting because he's just kind of hanging around in a lot of categories. So i maybe throw the four on a B line if I have to, but um, I'm not loving how deep I'm going already. So one, three, six, seven, and four. One, three, six, seven, and circle back with the four. Okay, excellent. So now I'm going to move on to our next leg here, uh, which is uh, race number six. We're going uh, class level 10, so still good horses for Indiana Grand. Six furlongs, dirt, and this thing looks like it's just going to be a blister up front. Um, but again, as you can see, I've got a pretty well spread out board here um, between all of my different options. So uh, I can see that I definitely want to use the three. I'm not thrilled that I have to use um, a speed horse that's favored but it certainly looks like the one to beat. The four uh, is going to be kind of sitting off that pace and could get a good run. Express Lady uh, has been running against the best class, um, you know, is one that I think has to be uh, has to be considered, but I do, I do think the B grade is probably correct on that one. Um, the seven tiny sneakers, I don't quite see. I'm actually going to downgrade that one, even though it's got record at the distance. The form is fine. Um, you know, should be forwardly placed early. I'm just not as sold on that one. I'll still use it, but I'm not going to not going to hang my hat on it. Um, the one is a tough one for me. Uh, looks like it could get the best of race flow. So could the eight. I don't love where they rate out on all the other categories. The one that I do think is a little um, nerve wracking for me is the six who who does sit in a good spot. So I'm going to move Pika Chica, uh, Pika Chica up a little bit. Um, now, I would like to see that horse a little more involved down here. Um, and given that, I think I'm actually going to leave this horse on the C line. Like that. Um, and that gives me kind of an out with that horse. So um Outside of that, I mean, I don't think there's really anybody that I need. I've got pretty much what I want here. So I'm going to go three, four, two, and six, seven. I think we're still going to be okay here. Three, four. I had the two on the B line, the six, seven on the C line. And again, this ticket creator, or the ticket constructor, you have access to on the website. Uh, you can purchase it for one time, uh, $5.00 and you will have access to it, um, be able to construct these tickets just the way I'm doing right now. I'm just going to do a quick double check of the grid just to make sure I didn't overlook anybody. It looks like I feel pretty good about where I'm at there. So uh, coming into race number seven, we're going class level 17. So now we're dipping back out. Uh, six furlongs on the dirt. This looks like a super slow pace, but that's um, because we have a lot of, you can see we've actually got empty holes um, on the grid, which means that these are a lot of horses that haven't raced before. So one of the things that I always like to do when I'm dealing with this is I know that horses with no data, a lot of times in this situation are first time starters. I can see right here that this horse 
elusive Freud is at three and a half to one. He rates out as 47 points, which means he did not score particularly well. But that probably has more to do with the fact that this horse has not run yet uh, and less to do with uh, the fact that this horse is um, is not a runner. So I'm going to put this horse for sure on my B um on my beeline. I'm just going to move it up because the reality is if this first time starter doesn't fit my mold just because, um, you know, just because it was uh, a first time starter, I don't want to get beat that way. So I'm going to keep that one up there. I do like the six and the nine pretty heavily here. You can see, I mean, they, they kind of, of the runners that have already run, they pretty much own uh, the top two spots. You can see it here as well. Six, nine, six, nine, 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 six, nine, six, nine, six, right? Um, five has a good breeding rating, um, but I like the B grade that they give it there. Um, outside of that, just kind of looking through, I think the eight is kind of interesting sitting in this spot, but I'm not, I'm not rushing to the window to bet. Um, I'm not convinced that the four, even though the four is showing up in a lot of places here, I'm just not convinced that the horse is going to get the right setup um, to, to make any headway here. Um, I guess as I'm looking at this, I mean, the one does come up as a B grade. Um, I guess I would could hear that argument. I maybe don't want to get beat by that one. And with this one, you know, you, if you can tell as I'm kind of going through it, I really don't have a real clear picture on this. So we're going to go six, nine, three, five, one. Um, six, nine, three, five, and one. Now, again, what I like about this, if you've watched previous videos where I go over the ticket constructor is I put that, uh, one horse in as a C. If I don't like it, I can just go exclude those tickets and it's not going to be any difficulty, um, because it's the only horse on the C line for me in the fifth leg. It's really easy to get out of that ticket. Um, without having to upset any of my other opinions, but it just gives me a nice quick reference that, hey, the one was one I couldn't get a read on. I tend to be more inclusive in races like this where I just don't have a good idea. I just don't know what's going to happen there. Um, and then this is our final payoff leg here. Oh, nope. Okay, so we have uh, race number eight, um, which is going to be the sixth and final leg. I forgot that we have a ninth uh, I'm just going to double check here to make sure that I have that correct. So race three, we've got the 20 cent straight fire six going up to eight. And then we must have just an extra bonus race here for the thoroughbreds at the end maiden special weight. Okay. Yeah. So they just kind of left the, uh, the maiden special weight off the ticket for us here. Um, that will be going a mile. Okay. So, um, good. I just want to make sure that, uh, I was actually covering the correct races in the correct order. Um, so as we're going through this race, um, this is another one that's extremely difficult. We're class level 21. Um, so really a uh, tough race here. We're going five and a half furlongs on the dirt, moderate pace. So we can't even really rely on a, uh, pace scenario that we think might happen. So I think I'm going to probably have to go deep here. It definitely looks like the six and the three are horses that are prominently placed. But one of the things that's interesting about the three at five to one is you'll notice the three doesn't really factor in a lot of categories. So I definitely want the six, but I think the three for me is going to get downgraded to here. Rates out well. I can definitely see why this horse is a good option. Um, it, you know, it, it's somewhat close in speed. Um, it has class on par with some of these other ones. Race flow, it's in the top five you know, it's in good form or at least could be ready to cycle up and it should be uh, prominently placed early and its rating is, is solid enough. That being said, uh, this is kind of one of those middle horses that I tend to fade backwards. Uh, now this horse at five to one, uh, Kushbu, I like Kushbu. I'm going to put that one in there. Uh, America rules, good pace numbers, good rating has been running against good class. I think that's another one I'm going to probably keep on my A-line. Um, just a doll, solid numbers, nothing super exciting. Um, boy, I don't know. It's hard because I look here and I think, you know, you could use the one, you could use the nine. Um, who's the five? Rosie Glow. 
not as interested in that one, but this is interesting here. I wouldn't totally be um, off that one. The tens kind of interesting. I mean, this is this is a race where I feel like I could go as deep as I needed, but I think I'm gonna go. I just want to do a quick double check here. The six is an early. The four is kind of an off the pace type. And the seven is a stock. So I've got a really good combination there. And then I've got some backup. So I think I'm going to go with this. So we'll go six, four, seven, three, one, nine. Let's take a look at where we're at in our ticket creator. Uh, four. Ooh, there it is. Six, seven. Um, and then I said we're going to go three and one, nine. So three is going to be on the B line and one and nine are going to be on the C line. And I can already see the red yelling at me saying, hey, you're over budget. So just right away, uh, my $100 budget was clearly not enough. Um, I was very easily able to go all A's um, and then A's with one B. Uh, but then once I started to get into my A's with two B's, that's when I started to, to really run into issues. So the first thing I'm going to do um, and this is a, a fairly easy one to take care of, is I'm just going to eliminate any race that has uh, the three in the second leg. Remember, that was the favorite that we used that I wasn't all that interested in. So I'm going to just come over here. I'm going to find anyone that uses a C in the second leg. This is only going to reduce uh, a very small portion of my tickets. In fact, uh, it looks like it's only going to take one ticket off the board. Um, because that would be the only ticket that I would have. It didn't really do much in terms of, oh, you know, helping my overall situation. So one of the things that as I'm looking at this that I'm really seeing is I think in all honesty, I'm just going to have to eliminate. Um, I think I'm just going to have to eliminate all my C tickets because as I'm starting to cut this down, those are my weakest opinions. Um, and as much as I would like to use them, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So um, I've got 4160 here. I think for sure I can cut them in the last leg. So I'm going to get rid of C's in the last leg here. We'll take out that ticket. Um, coming back here, I think I'll get rid of the one in the fifth as well. So now I'm just starting to kind of go through those C leg tickets to cut cut cost. I've gotten it way uh, well down here. Um, you know, as I go back here, this is an area where I'm, I'm just kind of looking and I'm thinking, okay, so where now do I go? I, I want to keep a lot of coverage here. I don't want to get hung out to dry here. I'm going to, I think, get rid of the, um, get rid of the C's in this leg as well. The six and the seven, who I had uh, down at the bottom. In fact, I think I've just got at this point, I'm hemming and hawing too much about seahorses. If if one of those opinions hits, I've just got to say enough is enough. So I've gotten myself down to 185. We're still definitely not in a position where um, I'm anywhere close to my budget. This is a spot where at, at this point I would go to my pick five and say, what do I have? Well, my pick five uh, that's not much better because remember, I'm jumping up to that 50 cent denomination. So using all of my combinations, now I'm actually up to 420. So this is not a situation where the pick five offers me any relief. Um, in fact, it makes things worse. Uh, if I go to the pick four, I'm still at 161, but I could probably take off some C choices there. Yeah, I could take myself off some C choices in the pick four and get myself down to 109, but that's not going to pay the way that the pick six is. So um, as we come here, now I've got to get back into these races and I've got to say, okay, where was my opinion the strongest and where was it the weakest? I think this was a weak opinion right here. Um, this one, the three and five. Yeah, this was a weak opinion here as well. Uh, the six, seven, this race, I think I can get rid of, uh, well, I've got the two express lady. Oh man, and that that late trip has been working really well. I want to keep that one. Let's get rid of Mr. Quality in this leg, um, and that could be problematic. But it's this is the second leg, um, I believe, right? Or is this the, no? This is the third leg. I'm going to get rid of the four. Um, so let's jump into our ticket creator again. Uh, here we go, and I'm going to get rid of the four in the middle leg. So that would be B's in the middle leg. Um, so anything with a B in the third leg is going to be gone. 
This one has a B in the third leg. Um, B in the third leg here. A B in the third leg here. Now you'll notice I'm going through the ones with two Bs, but I'm actually going to eliminate the single Bs as well. All A's with one B. Um, I, well, I guess let's take a look at where we're at budget-wise. 169, so I still got to keep going. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to keep cutting it down. And now I've gotten to a point where I've cut my ticket down to 164. We're better, um, but we're still not where we need to be. So let me take a look up here. Uh, we already cut that horse. Um, honestly, I mean, I kind of like having the extra coverage there. I think this is probably the one, and I, I hate to do it, um, but I think if I were going to go, if I'm really going to get this ticket under budget, I think I have to be bold, and I think I have to just single in the first leg. Um, I just have to say, if you don't have an A to kick off, I'm not using you. Get rid of this one. Get rid of this one. Um, get rid of this one. This one. This one. Okay. So now I've gotten myself down after a ton of cutting. I've gotten myself down to... Um, as you can see here, uh, a small number of tickets. I'm just slightly over budget. In fact, I can just make my budget now 101 and make all the red go away. There we go. Um, I've now gotten to a point where I've got a ticket that I, I feel comfortable with. I got to be honest with you. I don't know how feasible it's going to be to attack this pick six. Um, there's just too many races where I can't really narrow down an opinion where I feel like I'm leaving off really viable contenders. Um, you know, if I really felt confident in that single of the two and maybe just going through those two A horses, uh, the one and the seven in that second leg, then I could really sort of pyramid out um, and get a lot of selections in the last leg, get my seahorses in. Um, but I don't like having legs where I'm shaky, where I can't get a seahorse into the game. So um, that's kind of where I'll stand on this. But honestly, this is probably going to be a day where I'm going to pull back from the pick six. I'll look at things like the pick three and the pick four, um, see if I can string together some nice little combinations in there um, and make it a profitable day that way. Um, so if you want uh, these picks or these uh, summaries, I should say, from Indiana Grand on Monday, uh, you can buy them from our website. And with that, you will also get races one, two and nine, which I believe we skipped on the thoroughbred card, um, as well as don't forget that you can get the ticket constructor uh, on our website as well so that you can go through this process and uh, build all of your tickets. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that reset clear out all of my uh, all of my worksheets here and uh, wish you a good luck on your Monday uh, at Indiana Grand or wherever you may be playing. Um, I look forward to hearing from you about uh, hopefully lots of cashed tickets. Good luck.